I'm at the Danish uh, innovation company called EcoXPAC and you're known for developing molded fiber products and uh, one of the latest developments is a new paper bottle that you have come up with. Uh, we have seen many different paper bottles on the market uh, during the years but what difference this from other paper bottles? Um, I guess you uh, you are mentioned uh, the American uh, paper boy. Um, the difference between this one and the paper boy is that this is uh, made in one piece. The paper boy is um, uh, two shells with a with a plastic uh, bag in the middle. This one is one piece, and there is a biodegraded co uh, coating inside this bottle. So, so this is a more simple technique, but more maybe more useful for the market. Um, that's a good point because uh, this is more sustainable, economical. Uh, the price, the cost price, and the cost drivers are much lower than uh, than the paper boy. Is this product targeted for the food industry or for the non-food or for both? Uh, both actually, and um, the. The challenging with the food is, of course, the, co the coating, um, and the non-food is also demanding according to the to the coating. But that's different problems. So, talking about the challenges, as you mentioned, the coating, for example, we also have Søren Østergaard from Danish Technological Institute with us, and you are working together with the EcoX Pack in this project. What can you say about the challenges, and especially the coating? Yeah, but there's a number of challenges we have to solve before this can go on the market. But of course, doing a paper bottle, who has to have liquid contact, it all knows that liquid and paper is not really going well together. But at the same time, we don't want to have a plastic inner side as other bottle, uh, paper bottle system has. So we really want to have a full sustainable, that mean, means bio coating or other sustainable material who can take liquid in very long time, have the food contact, and even we want to have this bottle to have carbonized drinks. So you shall have a bottle who end up as just as tight as if you had used a can. So this means that if you solve this problem, you will really have a world new thing for the market, actually. I'm quite sure, yes. Uh, but there's also other challenges here, and I think uh, one of the things you have to, it's molded paper, and all know that molded paper comes up with a problem with the energy use to dry out the material. So one of the challenges we're really working with here is how to get the water separated from the paper fibers fast and efficient with absolute minimal energy use. And we have ideas that we really can take more than 50, maybe 80, 70, 80 percent of the energy for the production out. And energy is still cost for the bottle in the, in the end. Okay, Jesper, is this uh, also uh, use? Can you use this in in the traditional filling lines, for example, for for uh, mineral water or uh, sodas or whatever? Yes, actually, we have just made a test where this bottle was going in to an existing plant, filling plant, and uh, fill the product, and then put on the cap. This is a plastic cap for for that use, and uh, then uh, it was possible to to do the thing I just did. So and that, that's a very, very important thing that when we are finished with this project and we go to market with this project, we can, we can, um, we can serve a, a solution where the coming customers do not have any investment in new filling plants. They actually use the existing filling plants for these fiber bottles. And you also see that you will build a machine that, and it will work like a turnkey uh, factory close to the fillers, maybe? Yes, actually as a hole-in-the-wall um, concept, because it's very expensive to uh, transport bottles, because you are transporting airs, and it doesn't make sense when you see the energy calculation. So it's very important that these bottles are produced very close to the filling plants. Uh, coming back for a short while to, to, to the closure, it's plastic here. Is it supposed to be that in the future also? It's only for experiments. It's, uh, the, the, the cap will also be fiber. 
And what about the price? Uh, will this be comparable with, with a traditional plastic bottle? Actually, yes. Actually, yes. The cost price is very good at, uh, at this uh, product. And we have a, a, a business plan uh, for the bottle and it looks very good. Okay, and so then, since you're sort of the head of the, the challenges here, what do, we, what do you say in the time schedule from, from now? When, when can we expect to see this bottle on the market if, if it's up to you? In development projects, it's always a good question. But we hope within one or two years, you will see the first of this bottle on the market. And now you're looking for, for uh, of course, interested companies, brand owners and so on, and, and um, you're very close to go out to the market and really show this product. Is that true? That's true. And uh, we are also have some challenges raising money for, for, for the project. We, we have intentions to very soon raise 100 million Danish crowns and we are on our way. But we are still open for new investors, for instance, coming customers that are interested to go in, maybe buy some exclusivity rights or, um, or whatever. Okay, good luck with the development and thank you, gentlemen. Thank you.